Scripture lesson this morning is a list. might be the most important list in the Bible, but it's just a list. Matthew 10, Then Jesus summoned His twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits and to cure every disease and every sickness. And these are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Preach the good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cure the leopards, cast out demons. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this year during Lent at Kenilworth Union Church, Joe and Katie and I on Tuesdays and Sundays are talking about gifts from the dark wood. These are experiences in our lives which are both dark and gift. They don't look like gifts when we're going through them, They might happen when our lives are dark. They might happen when our lives are entangled in a forest thicket. But in retrospect, they might turn out to be gifts of God's good providence. Today, the gift, the dark gift of disappearing. And as I thought about this this week, it it occurred to me that the gift of disappearing or invisibility is both affliction and superpower. Yes? It's no fun to be invisible to the world. We all want to get attention, we all want to shine, we all want to participate. But do you know somebody who is invisible in his own family? It might be a middle child whose older sister has a choice of academic scholarship at Northwestern and soccer scholarship at DePaul, and whose younger brother might be the funniest and most popular kid in every gathering he goes to. And so this child, this middle child's parents spend every day of most weeks shuttling these siblings to soccer games and parties and AP tests and so forth. And this middle child hasn't found his best thing yet. He hasn't found what he shines at. He will someday, but not just now. That's no fun. Shy people think they're invisible sometimes. They want to be part of every group. They want to make that sleek presentation which awes the boss and wins the new client. They want to be in the school play. They want to sing a solo in the church choir. They want to own the dance floor like Bruno Mars, but they don't know how. They're afraid of rejection, right? What if they laugh when I sing? What if they scoff when I dance? You know people like, did you see the fascinating article in the Times from a few days ago about wrong number relationships in India? These are men in India who dial phone numbers at random and when a woman answers, they say, may I speak to Sonia? And the woman says, I'm not Sonia. And the man says, well, then can I talk to you? These are not obscene phone calls. They're just hoping to strike up a relationship. They're too shy to speak to a woman face to face. They're just hoping to hit the lottery relationship, relationship lottery. And, you know, I... It was a fascinating, fun article, but also a little heartbreaking. Shy people who seem invisible. Would it be fair to say that the presidential election in November was determined by Americans who were starting to feel invisible? Auto workers whose jobs are now done by robots, or textile workers whose jobs are now done in China, or taxi drivers whose customers now tap the Uber app, or Uber drivers whose jobs will soon be done by driverless cars, or Budweiser delivery men whose jobs will be done by driverless trucks. Soon there will be grocery stores without cashiers and bank branches without tellers. A while back, a woman walked into a bank branch and asked a teller where the ATMs were, and the teller pointed her in the right direction, and the teller said to the woman, may I help you, ma'am? And the woman said, no, I just want to withdraw some cash. This woman would rather talk to a machine than to a person. That's our future. 
these people feel invisible. Donald Trump promised to restore their visibility, so they voted for him. I get that. We want to be noticed. We want to be important. We want to shine. Invisibility is no fun. But, as I thought about it, it's also a superpower, right? In all the stories we tell ourselves through the centuries, invisibility is a superpower. I had such a blast this week looking into this, tracing down this meme through the centuries. And li- Thank you, by the way, for paying me to look into these things with you. <laughs> it starts with Plato 400 years before Jesus. and the Republic, Plato tells the story of Gyges the shepherd who stumbles upon a magic ring which makes him invisible and thereby he steals the throne and the queen of Lydia. A magic ring which makes us invisible. Where will we hear that again? It's the main plot driver for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, right? Harry Potter has his invisibility cloak. Invisibility occurs in Narnia. In the voyage of the Dawn Treader, there is a, a race of dwarves who are so ugly. They're called the Duffel Puds. The Duffel Puds are so ugly, they ask a magician to make them invisible. In all these mythic worlds we create for ourselves Middle Earth, Narnia, Harry Potter world, invisibility is a super. In Das Rheingold, in Wagner's Das Rheingold, Elbrecht makes himself invisible. In Marlowe's Dr. Faustus, Mephistopheles makes Faustus invisible so that the great reprobate can play pranks on the Pope. Last year, a few of us went to Chicago Shakespeare Theater and were mesmerized by Ariel in The Tempest because Ariel, the sprite, invisible, can harass the other castaways on the island. In the movie Ghost, Patrick Swayze saves the day, sort of, because nobody can see him. Not Whoopi Goldberg, not Demi Moore, not the bad guys. Arnold Schwarzenegger's predator is so terrifying, not because of his menacing weapons, but because he can materialize out of thin air. The Klingons and the Romulans chase down the Starship Enterprise with battleships hidden by cloaking devices. It's all through the literature. It's a superpower, right? We don't have to be the most visible people in the world. We don't have to be Jeff Bezos or Adele or Bruce Springsteen or Emma Watson or Lin-Manuel Miranda. We can accomplish our miracles surreptitiously. We can slip in and out of the dramas in our lives with nobody noticing. Has anybody watched that FX show called The Americans? We can be... We can be Philip and Elizabeth. We can slip in, we can put on a disguise, slip in somewhere and do our dirty tricks and then disappear without anybody noticing. So I've always loved the iconography by which the church has commemorated the original 12 disciples. We've been doing it this way with these shields, with these symbols for 1,800 years, ever since the second century. Some of these guys are so big and so famous Simon Peter is always commemorated with a set of crossed keys because Jesus gave Peter, the rock on which the church is founded, the keys to the kingdom. He's the most prominent disciple in Christendom, well, behind Jesus and his mom. The symbol for James the Greater on the back page, second one on the back page, James the Greater, a sword, a walking staff, and a shell. A sword, because James the Great was martyred by Herod, probably the first Christian martyr of them all, around 44 BC, uh, AD. It's a walking staff, because St. James walked all the way to the coast of Spain to preach the gospel, and a seashell, because maybe it was a handy canteen for food and water on his peripatetic pilgrimages, or maybe because he took the gospel all the way to the coast of the North Atlantic. Joe will tell you all about James the Great when she takes you to his very route, the Camino de Santiago, Sant Iago, Saint Iago, Saint Jacob, Saint James the Great. I don't want to talk about those guys, though, this morning. Everybody knows all about James and John and Peter. 
Did you know there was a disciple called Thaddeus? I did not remember till Thursday that there was a disciple called Thaddeus. What do you know about Thaddeus? Did you know that of the 12 disciples, two were called Simon? Most famously, of course, Simon Peter and also Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot because he was so passionate about his faith. And did you know that of the 12 original disciples, two were named James? James the Great, maybe because he was physically large, maybe because he did these great things, or maybe because he was older, and James the Less. James the Less, maybe because he was short, or maybe because he was skinny, or maybe he didn't do such great things like James the Great. Maybe he was younger, so they called him James Jr., or James the Second, or Jimmy. James the Less. How's that for a metaphor? These guys, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, James the Less, appear nowhere else in Scripture except in these lists. Every, all four Gospels give us the same list, same order, also in Acts, but that's the only place they appear in Scripture. They disappear from history. How would you like it if the only place your name appeared in the chronicle of the community's history was on a list. The only place was a a list of birthday party invitees when you were eight and a wedding guest list at a wedding you attended when you were 28 and in the guest book of a funeral you attended when you were 84. History knows nothing about these guys, but the church speculates that Thaddeus sailed across the Mediterranean to preach the gospel, so his symbol is a, sh- is a ship, and that Simon the Zealot has a fish and a Bible because with the Bible he hooked converts for Jesus. And James the Less has stones and a sword because he died for his Lord. They all participated in the construction of Jesus' church. Bruce Springsteen says that he has a ninja cloak of invisibility. This is the sweetest portion of his recent autobiography. It happens late in his story, late in his life, long after he has become the most famous rock star in the world, or maybe after Mick Jagger. Still, he says he can roam the boardwalk of his beloved hometown of Asbury Park on the Jersey Shore on a beautiful summer evening unrecognized because of his ninja cloak of invisibility. And so he can sneak into a dive bar to listen to a a new garage band and nobody will ask for his autograph and nobody will ask him to step on stage to sing his own songs because he is wearing his ninja cloak of invisibility, a baseball hat tugged down low over his eyes. Do you sometimes feel invisible? Use your superpower. Pull your ninja cloak of invisibility down low over your eyes and sneak into the drama of your... I don't know what that means for you, but you'll figure it out. You know... You could be Mississippi State. Mississippi State. I know you don't care about the Yukon Huskies like I do, but Mississippi State the other night ended a 111-game winning streak for the University of Connecticut women's basketball. 111. That is surpassed only by the University of Miami tennis team in the 50s and the 60s and the Trinity College squash team, 252 straight. Mississippi State. It came out of nowhere. Now, history is filled with great Williams. There's William Shakespeare, William the Conqueror, William of Orange, Prince William, Billy the Kid, Will I Am, William the Great. 
I'm William the Less. <laughs> That's okay. I'll never own the dance floor like Bruno Mars, but I can sneak into the gym through the side door with my ninja cloak of invisibility and invade the prom and offer a Coke to a lonely girl or sit next to a kid who is so far removed from all the other kids that it looks like he's in quarantine. And I can make a new friend. Because the good things in life, the kindnesses we cherish, are not done, from, for the most part, by presidents and potentates, but by almost invisible people like you and me. And so I love the way George Eliot concludes her sprawling masterpiece, Middlemarch, about ordinary people living ordinary lives in an ordinary rural village in ordinary 19th century England. Ms. Eliot writes that things are not so ill between you and me as they might have been is half owing to people who lived hidden lives faithfully and now rest in unvisited graves. Yes? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, amen.